We also welcome those of us that have joined us at our drive-in service uh, this glorious morning. We want to open up this service in going to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this glorious morning that you've given us to come and praise and worship your name. We thank you for your word that will come forth this morning and we declare that your word will change our hearts and minds where we will never ever be the same and we will be moved to go out and be a blessing to others and the community around us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. to the highest mountain looked all around couldn't find nobody went down to the deepest valley looked all around down there couldn't find nobody mm -hmm. I went across the deep blue sea couldn't find none to compare to your grace, your love, your mercy. Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody great, Lord, nobody greater than you. Yeah. Nobody can heal me like you can. You're most holy one, you are the great I am. Awesome in all your ways. And mighty is your hand. You are He who carries our redemption plan. You are He who carries our redemption plan. Everybody say, searched all over, couldn't find, couldn't find no. I looked high and low, high and low. Still couldn't find nobody, nobody great, nobody great, Lord, nobody greater than you. Said I searched all over, searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody great, Lord, nobody greater than you. Everybody say nobody great, nobody great, nobody great, Lord, nobody greater than you. I searched all over, said nobody, nobody. Nobody greater, Lord, nobody greater than you, yeah, 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 everybody say, nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you, I searched high and low, I couldn't find nobody greater, yeah, nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. I try and I try, but I can find nobody greater. Yeah, nobody greater, Lord. Nobody greater than you. You're higher than I am. 
say thank you once again for allowing us to see another day. We thank you for allowing us to come together to worship you, to magnify you, to give you the glory that's through your name. Father, we pray that over out these next few moments that you would speak prophetically, oh God, that you would encourage us, God, that you would impact us and that you would shift us to another level. God, we say thank you right now because we know that you are able to do exceeding abundantly above and beyond all we can possibly ask or think so we say thank you right now we give you glory and praise no matter what it is that we're facing on this morning i wonder if anybody is believing god for anything on this morning if you are why don't you open up your mouth and tell them thank you thank come you. on somebody open up your mouth and tell them thank you god we give you praise father we give you glory we, we understand that expectancy is the, is the breeding ground of miracles. So, God, we say thank you right now for touching bodies. Thank you for turning situations like no one else can. There's nobody greater. So, God, we give you glory right now. Father, we magnify you. Lord, we bless your name. And we ask for you to have your way in our lives. Do what you need to do in our midst. And we'll be ever mindful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Come on, one more time. Put your hands together. Give God praise on this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God that there is no one greater than the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Good morning. Good to see you on this morning. Um, we also want to say uh, God bless you to those who are online on this morning. Uh, we are grateful to be here again. Um, this is the day the Lord has made. Amen. 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 And I want to rejoice and be glad in it. We're excited about what's taking place uh, today. We're excited because um, not just is it a, another opportunity to come together. By the way, how many know everybody uh, isn't here that wanted to be here on the day? But how many know because you're here? Tell your neighbor, you're, you're here because of grace. Tell your neighbor, you're here because of grace. Amen. And we thank God that because of his grace, we're here on this morning. And we're excited about what's taking place. Uh, we're looking forward at the end of service day. We have a baptism on today. Amen. I said we got a baptism on today. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We're excited about what God is doing. Um, and we're so grateful uh, that he allows us to be a part of what's taking place. Um, as we go forward on today, um, we want to encourage you in advance. Amen. Happy Independence Day. Amen. It's coming up. Um, I pray that you have a safe time. Amen. Um, and don't do nothing crazy with fireworks that you're not capable of doing. Amen. Uh, but make sure you enjoy uh, the time uh, coming up even this weekend. Um, and then also uh, this week, uh, you'll hear a little bit more about this. But we're going to uh, I'm, I'm going to be on a podcast um, for Williamson's Chapel on Wednesday. I want to encourage you guys to join in. It's going to be about a lot of things that's taking place in the community, how God is working through High Purpose Church to impact and bring about change. In the community so i want to encourage you to be a part of that on wednesday somebody say wednesday wednesday so look for your email um the announcements for more information concerning that amen and as we uh get ready to get into our time together 
Um, I want you to, first of all, turn your Bible to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 30. 1 Samuel, chapter 30. Uh, we're actually going to read from the ESV on this morning, the English Standard Version. Um, 1 Samuel, chapter 30. And um, in the ESV, we're going to be talking about the life of someone who um, we're very familiar with. Um, it is David. Uh, this is David before he became the king. I think that this is an important. Uh, hold on one Amen. Where was I? <laughs> um, amen. We had to replace the batteries there. Um, but one of the things I wanted to talk about today is the fact that as we are experiencing things today in our society that we've never seen before, we are all in the middle of a time where there's a tremendous amount of changes and a tremendous amount of things happening all at once. And I, I found, I find that it's helpful whenever we go through things that we can't understand or things that may be difficult for us to relate to, is to go back to the Word. How many know that if you go back to the Word, it'll help you be grounded, amen? You see, and I, I want us to talk specifically um, in, in the book of 1 Samuel about a man by the name of David, because David, we know that he was Israel's greatest king. We understand that he was the man after God's own heart. We understand that David was the one that God essentially established a covenant with and said, I'm going to send Christ through your line. Um, but we realize that that's the end of David's life. But David had to go through a lot of stuff to get there. And, and how many understand that in order for us to get to where God is taking us, we got to go through some stuff to get where he's taking us. How many understand that today? And, and today I want to talk to us and, and understand that today, um, this is a message going out to those that have gone through some things. If you haven't gone through some things, take notes for later. Amen. But but if you've gone through some things, let me see the hands of the folks that have gone through some challenges, some tests, some issues, some, some things that have impacted your life. You see, I think that it's important for us to understand when we face trials and when we go through different things, uh, what it is that God is doing in our lives. Because many times if we have a sense that there's a purpose beyond the pain, we can endure and make it through. And so I want to talk to us looking at David's life because I believe that he serves as a model, as a role model for those of us who have gone through some challenges. And here in 1 Samuel chapter 30, um, we read, uh, starting here at verse number one, it says, Now when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day, the Amalekites had made a raid against the Negev, against Ziklag. They had overcome Ziklag and burned it with fire and taken captive the women and all who were in it, both small and great. They killed no one, but carried them off and went their way. And when David and his men came to the city, they found it burned with fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him raised their voices and wept until they had no more strength to weep. David's two wives also had been taken captive, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. And David was greatly distressed, 
For the people spoke of stoning him, because all the people were bitter in soul, each for his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And, then, and if you would, I want you to just turn to your neighbor and tell him, neighbor. Neighbor. Come on, raise your voice. Tell him, neighbor. Neighbor. This is not my first rodeo. This is not my first rodeo. Come on, turn to your other neighbor. Tell him, other neighbor. Other neighbor. This is not my first rodeo. This is not my first rodeo. You see, the interesting thing about David's life, if you were to actually go back and look at where he started, David had a long history of ups and downs. David had a lot of victories and he went through a lot of valleys. David had some experiences through life that if he didn't stay focused, he could have gotten thrown um, from his faith. Uh, you know, David started as a shepherd on the backside of the desert, minding his own business, worshiping God. And, and we understand based on David's own testimony that one day he was watching his sheep, but then a bear came out and attacked the sheep. Now, in the most, most of us in our circumstances, if we saw a bear, I don't know how many people are going to go fight a bear. If you were going to fight a bear, no one else would hear about it because that would be the last day of your life. But David, something got a hold of David. And, and David realized that there was an anointing on his life that just came out of nowhere, seemingly nowhere, and caused him to go after that bear, to fight that bear. And he won. We know David said that the same thing happened with a lion. A lion happened to come across his path. And, and after the, the lion and after the bear, David realized that there was an anointing on his life. You see, I, I think there's that, that all of us should come to a place, hopefully, as you as you grow in God, you should get to a place where, where the presence of God gets into your gets into your life where you can feel his presence. I wonder if anybody has ever felt his presence before. There, there's some times where you can feel his presence. Sometimes one of the ways you feel his presence more than anything else is when you're going through, because that's when you're praying like never before. And when you're really pushing into his presence and when you feel his anointing, a lot of times it gives you the ability to endure things you may not be able to endure on your own. You see, David didn't put himself up in this position, but God chose him to pour out his anointing on his life. The thing I love about God is you don't have to do anything to be qualified to be used by God. In fact, God many times uses the most disqualified people to, to pour out his anointing upon so that he can do a work inside your life. I wonder if I got any disqualified people in here that are grateful that God can put his hand on your life. You, you see, David, when he was just minding his own business, he was just watching the sheep and, and the bear came and the, and the, and the lion came. And, then, and it was after that, David realized that, that he didn't have to fear things that everybody else feared. It was, it was after he went through those circumstances that he realized that even though there are things that are bigger than me that could take me out, I don't have to be afraid because I serve a God who's bigger than all. I don't know what you're facing on today. I don't know what your financial situation is. I don't know what your health situation is. But I do know this: God is bigger than all. Amen. You see, David had this had this uh, he had this experience that he had experienced the anointing of God, so that when he stumbled on the battlefield one day, and Goliath was standing there, a giant that was bigger than all the other uh, all the other armies, who was taunting the entire nation of Israel. David was the only one who looked at that giant and said, that giant has to come down. He, he wasn't with the rest of the soldiers that said, hey, we're going to do the smart thing. We're just going to calm down. David said, no, wait a minute. I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. You see, because it's not because of my strength. It's because of the strength that's in me. You see, you see, David, because of that anointing, he moved forward and he took Goliath out. But the interesting thing about David's life was after he got anointed by God, and by the way, when, after, when, he, when the anointing got poured on his head, God called him to be the king. And after the, the power of God hit him, and after he won, and he overcame these different battles, that's when he went through the darkest time of his life. You would think that after you killed a giant, that you would be done fighting for the rest of your life. You might think that after you took out a bear or a lion, you would have reached where God was trying to take you in your life. But what David began to understand was after he had that victory, he was going through the darkest time. You see, one of the things that we got to understand is we don't know what, what it is that we're going through, but how many understand God has a path for your life? God has a plan for your life. And you don't know what's coming around the corner, but what you got to understand is that God has a plan. Amen? Tell your neighbor, God has a plan. God has a plan. David, he takes out Goliath. He's, about, he's already crowned to be king. He's, he's now in the palace. He's close to the place where God has called him to be. 
he, he's got a vision that he can see coming to pass. And that's when the javelin gets thrown at his head. That's when the king, Saul, who was in position, is jealous because of the anointing on his life. And tries to take him out. Now, I got to tell you that I know that all of us go through different things. Some of the things we go through is because we talk too much. Amen. Don't have a witness in here. Oh, y'all ain't being honest in here. Some of us put ourselves into trouble because of the stuff we say and some of the stuff we do. But there's some stuff you go through. It's not because of what you've done, but it's because of what God is doing in your life that that trouble hits your life. Amen. And you got to understand the difference. You see, David was in a position because he was anointed and all of a sudden because he's anointed, he's under attack. One of the things that we got to be careful when you get anointed, understand that the enemy knows that you're anointed. One of the things you got to realize is that when you're under, uh, when you're anointed, you will come under attack. How many understand that when your God's hand is on your life, the enemy pays attention. And so as a result, you know, Saul tries to take him out. Now David has to flee. And for the next four years, he's on the run. It seems like he's got the calling. It seems like he's got the gifting. It seems like he's trusting God. But all of a sudden, his life is in jeopardy. He has to hide in caves. He has to hide with the Philistines, the enemies. He has to act like he's crazy and about lost his mind. You know, and he, but, but thank God he's just acting. Amen. You see, some of the challenges that some of us have gone through, if you had lost your mind, people would have said it was all right. If people understood your testimony. Amen. But, but, how many, but it, because of the grace of God, he was able to hold it together. He's hiding in the Philistines territory. He goes to a place known as Ziklag. And we know that in Ziklag, um, we see that he's now trying to just, he's trying to just survive. He's just trying to hold on. He's just trying to hang together. He, he's not trying to do anything special. He's just trying to stay alive. But it's in Ziklag that something powerful happens. Look at this in, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 20. As, as David is in Ziklag, it says, And everyone who was in distress, and everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was bitter in soul gathered to him, and he became commander over them. And there were with him about 400 men. The interesting thing is while David is just trying to hold on, he's not trying to do anything special, he's got 400 people that come to him. He's got 400 people that say, listen, I know you're going through, but there's an anointing on your life and I need to get close to you. How many know that when you're anointed, you don't have to tell everybody you're anointed. You just got to live your life. You see, and, and here's the other challenge. Even when you're going through, God will still use you to speak a word to somebody else. I know you're upset. I know you're hurt. I know you're going through your own pain. But if you got a word on the inside, you need to be able to speak into somebody else's life. You see, you see, David was in a position where he wasn't trying to lead anybody. But there were people that were in need. And there was a calling that was on his life. You see, the interesting thing, as I was reading up on this, uh, I started to research something I, had, I don't know anything about. I wonder if anybody has ever been to a rodeo. Has anybody here ever been to a rodeo? I'm just curious. Been to a rodeo? Okay, a couple folks. A couple folks. I, I, I've never been to a rodeo. I probably watched about 30 seconds on TV. Because I asked myself, you put yourself in a life-threatening situation on a 1,600-pound bull, you got him angry, bucking and kicking, and if you get stepped on, that's your own fault. That's just how I look at things. But the reality is when I started to look into the rodeos, I, I started to try to figure out why in the world would somebody do that? And what I read online is, because I'm the only body that actually has done it, but they say, you know, it's kind of like a call. I, I do it because I need to. I, I do it because because it's because it's something that I feel like I can learn and I can grow from. There, there, there's certain things that you find in life that's a calling on your life. There's sometimes where you're going to find yourself in situations where you can't help but get in the middle of some challenges. Now I know nobody likes drama in their lives. Amen. Nobody likes drama. If you raise your hand, come come a little bit closer. Amen. <laughs> but the reality is, we we don't like drama. But the reality is there's some dramas you have to get into because it's what you're called to do. There's some things that, that God puts on your heart. There's people that God places on your heart. And you've got to recognize when the calling is on your life because you've got to respond to the call. You see, David was the kind of person that he wasn't trying to, he wasn't trying to necessarily make his name great. I think he would have been happy worshiping God for the rest of his life on the backside of a desert. But God called him. Come on, tell your neighbor, God called you. God called you. You see, God called him to a place known in verse 1 as Ziklag. He says, now when David and his men came to Ziklag, this was a place. Ziklag means a place of winding. 
The place where David was at was a winding place. It, it was a lot like uh, it was a lot like a rodeo where you know I, I don't know any things about rodeos, but I do understand that that the, the bull likes to wind and kick and spin and jump and, and try to throw riders off. I do understand that when you when you're on that bull, you're in a place where it feels like you're going one way and then you're going the next. I, I know that some may feel like as they go through life, especially during this season and this time, it seems like we go through one thing after another thing. It seems like, you know, once the, as soon as the virus hit and people were dying, we got in the, we got in the quarantine and then all of a sudden we got issues on TV every day that's causing us stress. It seems like the, the economy is going up and down and it, and it feels like sometimes we can be in a winding place that whips you back and forth. You see, I, I believe that what God is calling us for in, in this time, amen, is more weeble wobbles versus Humpty Dumpty Saints. How many of you know the difference between a Weeble Wobble and a Humpty Dumpty saying? You see, you see, Humpty Dumpty, if you guys remember the story, Humpty Dumpty, he sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And all the king's horses, all the king's men, they, they couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. You guys remember that story? You're looking at me like you don't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> you see, the, the reality is that there are some falls that if you fall down, and you crack and some falls if you if you get hurt and, and recognize that that's going to happen to all of us you have a choice when you fall down your choice is do you stay there or do you become a weeble wobble and come back up anybody remember the weeble wobbles those weeble wobbles i used to love them i, I think little boys love them more than anything else because that was the because every time you're in the house mom says stop punching stuff stop throwing things but the weeble wobble was meant to take abuse the weeble wobble was something you blew up in air and put it in the yard and you could punch it you could kick it, you could body slam it. Come on, you could jump off the roof of a building. Don't ask me how I know. You can jump on top of that thing. And no matter how hard you hit that thing, it would hit the ground and keep on coming back up. And there was something about that weeble wobble that you got more tired hitting the weeble wobble than wobble was still just smiling the half of the time. <laughs> you see, I believe that God is looking for some weeble wobble saints, amen? Some saints that can take a hit and keep on coming back. Some, some saints that can go through some stuff but still can stand in the end. I believe that the only way we're going to be a weeble wobble saint is as if we have a strong base. Amen. Amen. You, you see, you see, here's the deal. What happened with with David was that David was in a place where he went through a whole lot of drama in his life. David had already taken out Goliath, that 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 giant that could have taken him out. He took out the lion, took out the bear. He was on the run for four and a half years from King Saul, the man that should have embraced him and pulled him into the kingdom. And it was after he was there for four and a half years, he now is in a place called Ziklag. And the Bible tells us, if you were to read a little bit earlier in 1 Samuel, you would know that David went out to fight. And as he went out to fight, he came back. And he, by the way, he won the fight that he was in. David was a man of war. David was a fighter. David was a person that if he got into a fight, he expected to win because he, he knew how to use a sword. He knew how to battle. And David took his 400 men that were in debt and distress. He took, he took a group of men that were dysfunctional and he overcame and he won. He won the battle and as he's coming back with another mountaintop experience, he comes back home and the Amalekites had raided his home base. They had taken all of his wives and children. They took away all the valuable possessions. They burned the city with fire. David was feeling like, man, I just came out of the last trial and now I'm going through another one all of, all of a sudden. And the Bible says that this was, one, this was one struggle that hurt the entire army so much that they cried. The Bible says that his men cried aloud so long that they didn't have strength to cry anymore. How many of they were hurt in a deep place? I'm talking about a hurt that, that's not just, oh man, they didn't have my order ready when I went through the drive through I'm talking about a serious hurt. I wonder if anybody can identify with that sort of pain. Where, where David was at a place where he said, listen, I, I, after I had served God for so long and I've done so much and I had expected things to turn around and I, and I thought maybe this was going to be the last fight, all of a sudden he's in another test and another trial. Scripture goes on to say that his men were hurt so bad that they talked about stoning David. Now, I don't know about you, but this is probably the thing that might have got me a little bit more irritated because David never asked for those guys to follow him. 
David never asked for those people to be a part of his team. They came to him because they needed his life. Now, because they were going through, they talked about stoning David, the same person who God was going to use to bless their lives. Mm. You see, I, you know, already heard that hurt people hurt people. Amen. You, you got to recognize that there's, you got to be a big enough person to look past people's pain sometimes to see their purpose. You got to be a big enough person to look past some of the drama that goes that people go through. David was in a place where the people around him were considering stoning him. And what we don't understand, what David didn't understand then, but we understand now, was David was about to become the king. We understand that the drama he was in was because there was a final test he had to go through. The thing I need to tell you today, I don't know what you're going through, but the greater the drama in your life, the greater the deliverance God is working in your life. I, I need you to understand that you may feel like you're going through stuff you can't endure. You may be feeling like there's stuff you can't maintain and hold on to. I want you to know the more drama you're going through, you ought to give God praise because the greater deliverance that's in your life. Mm -hmm. Somebody ought to take a minute right now and just tell God thank you. I, I don't like the pain, but I like the purpose that you're working out. You, you, see, you see, in verse number six, this is something I've never seen of David throughout scripture. In verse number six of, of 1 Samuel chapter 30, it says, and David was greatly distressed. Somebody say distressed. He was distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because all the people were bitter in soul. He said, you know, all of these people were bitter because of what took place, because of the loss they went through. All of these people were bitter because of the pain that they were experiencing at this point. They felt like maybe if they hadn't gone with David, they could have protected their family. Maybe if they hadn't stepped out in faith, they wouldn't have been in this situation. They looked at all of the things that they had lost and they allowed that to impact their very soul. You see, you, you see, when you go through bad things, you know, how many know it's okay to be sad every now and again? I, you know, this generation, the younger generation now, it seems like everybody's depressed. Everybody's depressed about anything. I, I mean, it, gets, it seems like, I don't know, it seems like, now I know that every time, as an older person, I say, back in my day, and all the, old, all the young people say, oh my God, here we go again. But the reality is, it seems like nowadays, folks get depressed about everything. If they don't get enough likes on their Facebook, oh my God, I'm depressed. You know, if, if people don't come through for the party, oh my gosh, I'm depressed. You see, you see, one of the ways that I can tell you, it, when sad things happen, it's okay to be sad. It's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to be hurt. But, but when you get to the point where you get distressed, that's when you hold on to the thing that hurt you so bad that sometimes it's hard for you to see your way out on the other side. You see, there's a difference from going through and being, and being frustrated and being hurt and angry. We're all going to get hurt. We're all going to go through some things. But the key is you can't focus on all your pain. You got to look past your pain. You see, one of the things I, I found in, in researching uh, bull riding, because I was trying to figure out, you know, how this works and, how, and why this works, what I discovered was when you're on a bull, they tell you to actually look at which way the bull is leaning before, before the bull moves. If you look at where he's turning, you know where he's going to lean and you know how to adjust. And the reality is the bull moves so fast, so quick. You have to constantly anticipate where the bull is moving. If he's going this way, you got to lean that way. If he's going this way, you got to lean to the side. And in order to stay on, if you're going to endure, you have to constantly look ahead. If you take one second to think about the, the last move and how your back hurts because you planned it the wrong way, you're going to get thrown off. The reality is, as things are coming at you, the thing I need you to understand is we've got to continue to look forward to what God is going to do next. We've got to continue to look forward and say, God, listen, I know, I, I know I'm in this and I know it doesn't feel good, but my question is, where are you leading me right now? And where are you calling me to move right now? How are you asking me to, to speak right now? If we can begin to hear from the Spirit of God, I think it can help us to endure. Tell your neighbor, you got to learn how to endure. you got to learn how to endure. You, you see, you see I, I remember talking to a, a lady one time. I was doing some counseling and she was talking about her husband and how her husband was just a horrible person. And how he said something. I was like, oh my God, is that what he said? She said, yeah. And then, and then she said, he did this. I was like, oh man, that's even worse. Did he do that? She said, yeah. I said, and then he did something else. I said, oh my God, he did that as well. She said, yeah. And then when I asked her when it happened, she said, well, the first thing happened seven years ago. The second thing happened three years ago. The other thing happened like five years ago. I'm like, well, you're telling me this whole story is this, but all happened right now. And somehow you have captured all of the negative problems and all of the negative issues and you've told yourself a story that your life is so horrible. But what you forgot to talk about is all of the other seven years where everything were awesome. 
You forgot to talk about the happy times. And, and you see, here's the problem. We have a tendency of remembering all of the problems that we've gone through. But how about remembering the fact that God brought you through those problems? How about looking about the fact that God has, has taken you through some of those valleys? You can look at the challenge. You can look at the issue. And if you look at that, I promise you, you will get depressed. But if you can look at the fact that if God brought me out of that challenge and kept me where I am today, it'll give you faith to move forward. Come on, tell your neighbor, you need some faith. You need some faith. You need some faith. You, 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 see, you see, the thing that we got to understand in verse number six is that David was in a difficult situation. David was in a challenging situation because even the people who were around him got to the point where they decided they were going to take him out. It's one thing to go through challenges. It's one thing to face opposition on the outside. But when you come home and you got drama in your house, I mean, that's a whole different type of drama. It's a whole different level of challenge. And David was at a place where he couldn't call on his prayer partner because his prayer partner wanted to stone him. How many know when your prayer partner wants to stone you, you're going through some stuff. When, when the folks that are in your corner are supposed to be encouraging you are, are folks that are making a fist. You, you got some issues, amen? David is at a place where he can't reach out to anybody. Now understand this. I want to encourage you. I think this is important that you need people around your life who will encourage you. You need people around your life that'll get a prayer through. You need folks that are around your life that are going in the same direction that when you get weak, they can help give you some strength. But I need you to understand there's gonna come some times where you can't even reach your prayer partner. There will be some times when you go through that the person that's in your corner may be looking at you sideways. When you get into a situation like that, my question then is what are you going to do? Because it's at that time that you have to realize what's on the inside of you. You gotta, you gotta make a decision on have you made up your mind to move forward in God. You see, one of the things that I love about what David did was the Bible says that David strengthened himself. Yes. David encouraged himself. Yes. You see, look at this in verse six. It says, but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. First of all, there's two words I'm gonna focus on here. The first word is but. Somebody say but. but. It says, but David. Now, now, the thing you got to understand about but is but is a three-letter word. That's a conjunction. We talked about this. But joins what happened in the previous to what's about to happen in the future. And the thing I love about David is although David just lost his family, the Bible says, but David strengthened himself. The thing I love about David is though, even though David lost everything and his, his home was burned with fire, the Bible says, but David strengthened himself. Even though the people around him said that they were going to stone him because of what took place in their life. The Bible says, but David strengthened himself. Even though David himself was distressed and stressed out. And how many know there's going to be some times you don't even feel like praying. Anybody ever get to the place where you don't even feel like lifting up your hands? The Bible says that in that situation, the Bible says, but David still did encourage himself. The thing you got to understand is when you're going through, your butt has to be big enough to get you through. I wonder if any, I believe that I'm looking for some big butt sinks. Anybody got some big butts that'll hold you down in the middle of a challenge? Come on, some, some butts that are bigger than the problem that you're facing. You see, the reality is, if your butt's not big enough, you're never going to make it through. But if you get to the point where ahead of the trial, ahead of the test, you understand that God has a word for your life. How many of that's going to hold you down in the middle of some trials and tests that you have? You see, the Bible says that, that David was at a place where he didn't have anyone around him, but it says, but he strengthened himself. Somebody say strengthen. strengthen. Now, now the interesting thing is the word strengthen is hazak, which means to be bound fast, which means to stick. The funny thing about it is the word distress. One of the translations for that is to stick as well. So the same, the same thing is when you're going through a trial, you can get stuck in your trial, or you can stick to what God is speaking over your life. The question is, what are you going to stick to? The, the Bible says that David, even though he was distressed, even though he was in a tight situation, he decided to hold on even closer to the things of God. Yeah. The thing I want to encourage you in is you know, when you're going through, that's not the time to stop coming to church. When, you, when you're going through, that's not the time to get separate and by yourself. That's the time when you get to get around the saints. That's the time to get into the presence of God. David made up his mind that he was going to stick closer to God if this was going to be the last day of his life. He made up his mind that he didn't understand how things were going to turn out, but he made up his mind that he was not going to let go of God. You see, you see, I believe that this is very interesting because we have to hold on. We got to learn how to hold on to the word. 
Say, neighbor, you got to learn how to hold on. You got to learn how to hold on. You see, you see, one of the things that we do on Thursday nights is we teach soap and we teach about studying scripture and how to get the word on the inside of us so that we can hold on to it. The reality is you might not get a whole lot out of that memory verse you read this morning, but if you hold on long enough, you're going to need that word that God spoke into your life. I can't tell you how many times I've gone through trials and tests only for God to remind me of something that he told me in the past. And when I realized that God gave me the answer before I even had the question, that's just another reason to give him praise. That's another reason to have faith that he know that I know that he's going to take me out of the situation I'm in right now. Oh, come on, somebody give God praise that he already has the answer for you. You see, one of the things that I find amazing about David in his life is as he went through the, the, the mountaintop, he saw victory, he came through the valley. And he went through after the Goliath, and he came through after Saul. He, he went through with, with the Philistines, and he came back through after Ziglag. He, and the mountaintop experience was a lot like riding a bull that's trying to jerk you off, that was going up and down and back and forth. And one of the things that I learned about bull riding was that if you are trying to be rigid and too, and, and too uh, solid, you're going to get thrown off, and you're probably going to break your back. One of the things they tell you about bulls is that if you're going to ride, you got to learn how to be flexible. You got to learn how to lean. You got to learn how to rock. You got to get that weeble wobble spirit. You got to learn how to throw your hand around every now and again. And the reality is, if you're going to go through some stuff, you got to learn how to shift your weight every now and again. You see, our problem is when we go through, we declare, God, you're going to bring me out, and I believe you're coming out in five days. But if God didn't tell you that, how many of you would not tell yourself that? Sometimes God's not necessarily taking you out, but He's taking you through. And the best thing you can do is just hold on and go through the entire process so you can come out a victor on the other side. Yeah. You see, you see the challenge, the, the thing I love about David was David didn't know when his story was going to end, but he knew that he was going to hold on to God as long as it took. Come on, tell your neighbor, you got to hold on as long as it takes. You got to hold on. The funny thing is, Ziklag, this whole experience that David was going through the whole time he was in this town, it was only for about four months, scholars believe. There was so much that took place, but it felt like an eternity, but it was only four months. And it was amazing that if you take a step back and, and if you knew it was only going to be four months, you said, I can do anything in four months. But he didn't understand how long it was going to take. And, some, and it took to him, it could have felt like an eternity. The interesting thing is that on a bull ride, it only lasts for six, for eight seconds. If you can last eight seconds, you can win the match. You see, the reality is the things that we're going through, I know it feels like it's going it, to, I know we feel like we're going to be going through it forever. But how many understand that the brief time we spend on earth is just a millisecond compared to eternity? And when you start to think about the long term, it'll help you to endure some of the things in the short term. The challenge that we have is in the short term is when things get crazy. It's when things get out of control. It's when things start trying to throw us off. But what we got to understand is that as, as we start to endure, as we start to hold on, that God will give us strength so that we can make it until the end. One of the problems that we have many times when we go through is we want to go back to our old lifestyle. You know, whenever, whenever we make up our mind to get serious for God, the first thing we want to do is we want to go back because we remember where we came from. But the thing that I always remind myself is there's a reason why I left where I came from because because it wasn't so great, that's why I left it in the first place. There's a reason why I'm standing with God, because I trust him and my life has been better on the other side. And the thing we have to do is we have to learn how to look forward into what God is taking us to. David was in a tough situation. David was in a challenging situation, but he encouraged himself in the Lord. David found a way somehow to remind himself of things that God has spoken into his life. I don't know what it is. People give me grief sometimes because... Anytime I, I'm asked to, to open in prayer, a lot of times I'll sing the same song. I, a lot of times I'll sing the same song that I sing time after time after time, year after year after year. The reason I sing that song is because I remember when I first sang that song where God moved into my life. The reason I sing that song is I know how many times where I'm trying to get into the presence of God. You see, a lot of times I don't try to sing the latest thing on the radio. I try to sing what's in my spirit because it reminds me of where I came from. And I don't know what David might have been singing, but I, I could just sing him as a worshiper by himself, just singing a song, saying, My God is an awesome God, he reigns. I, I don't know what he's saying. I, I don't know if he just said, God, you are a great God. I don't know what it is, but there was something that caused him to encourage himself, to strengthen himself. 
The thing I need you to understand, you might not be able to sing worth a lick. You, you might be able to, you might sound like a cat that, that's sick, amen, when you open up your mouth. But the Bible says you got to learn how to make a joyful noise, amen. And you got to learn how to get into your spirit. You got to learn how to get one of them, them ugly songs where your face shrivel up when you sing it. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? That, come on, that song that comes from your spirit. Whatever you got to do, you got to learn how to encourage yourself in the Lord. You got to learn how to speak to yourself and remind yourself of what God has done. Because when you encourage yourself in the Lord, it gives you the strength to endure what's coming forward. Yeah. You see, David demonstrated that when he was able to dig deep, he didn't understand it at the time. But when he was able to dig deep, he was able to encourage himself out of that distress. He was able to motivate those 400 men to go and pursue what they had lost. God was going to give them a victory one more time. God was going to open up the door one more time. And what David didn't understand, though, was this was the last test before he made it to the crown. Yeah. This was his last test before he made it to the, to the palace. What he didn't realize was he was so close. This is the problem because it's, it's always too soon to give up because you don't know what God has for you around the corner. Yeah. You see, David, thank God he held on because God blessed him on the other side. God honored him on the other side. He elevated him on the other side. And I don't know who I'm talking to on today, but there's some that are going through some things. God told me to tell you, this is your last test. He's getting ready to elevate you. He's getting ready to turn things around. You see, the thing that you must understand is that when God does big things, he doesn't always look for the biggest and the strongest. A lot of times he looks for the smallest so that he can get the greatest glory. You see, today I believe in our situation and our time, that God is getting ready to shift things as he did in David's life. The, the thing that was so violent in David's life, the reason why things were so choppy in David's life was because God was getting ready to elevate him as the king. God was changing the very government. He was turning things around. He was doing something bigger than just David. David couldn't just complain about his situation because he was in a situation because he was called by God to change the nation. And the thing that you must understand is you don't know how far the impact is going to be in your life when God gets done with your life. You see, on this morning, I want to I want to tell you that we're in the middle of some transition and some changes now. I got to tell you that through some of the things that have even taken place in the past, um, there are those from the city, the, the officials that have reached out to our church to help lead some things. Now, we're not the mega church in town, but, but we are perceived as the group that God is using to speak leadership. Not only that, but there's, a, there's an initiative we're now leading now with like 14 other churches where we're going to impact Mooresville like never before. And I need you to understand, you don't have to be the biggest. You just got to be committed to the will of God. Right. Why I tell you that is, I don't know what's going on in your life, but I believe God wants to elevate you in your job and in your school and in your circumstance, yeah. that if you can just endure on the other side, you can be used to be to used by God to speak life into somebody else. Yeah. That God can use you to make a difference in your family, in your home, where you didn't feel like you had any power. I need you to understand with the anointing, God's power can turn things around. Yes. So today, I want to encourage all of us on today, as we, as we endure the different challenges that we're facing, as we're going through the different situations that we're experiencing, to trust God like never before. I want to encourage us today to hold on to the Word of God like never before. I want to encourage us to plan our weight in God and, and, to, and to shift our faith to, to where we realize that God, it may, you may not come the way I expect you to come, but I understand that all things are going to work together for my good. Today, I want to pray with us on this morning. And as we pray, I just want you to, I just want you to raise your hand where you are. Amen. I want you to raise your hand where you are. Amen. And as you do, I want you to pray. I want you to pray with me on this morning. Father, as we come before you, we first of all say thank you. We thank you, God, that your hand is upon our lives. We thank you that you have a purpose for our lives. We thank you, God, that you have kept us and you've, you've held us through problems and challenges in the past. And Lord, we realize that you didn't do all of that in the past to leave us right now. In spite of what we face, in spite of the opposition that, that, that stands in front of us. God, we make up our mind right now to stand firm in you. We, we make up our mind to hold on to your word like never before. Father, I pray that regardless of the circumstances that, that people are experiencing right now, in spite of the pain, in spite of the challenges that we go through, God, that you give your people a mindset, oh God, to hold on. Father, I pray that even as we go through, that we would remember what you've done for us in the past. 
that we would reflect on the fact that you made a door, that you made a way out of nowhere. You opened up doors and, and God, you stepped in in the past. And if you did it in the past, we thank you that we can have faith that you'll do it again. God, I thank you right now. God, for the elevation that's going to take place. I thank you right now for the shifting that's going to take place in the lives, in the minds, and in the hearts of your people. I thank you as you expand our spheres of influence to speak peace, to speak life into the lives of others. God, I say thank you right now that even as that takes place, God, you're not only going to shift people, but, but through that, God, you're going to shift circumstances and you're going, to, you're going to turn things around. So, God, we give you glory right now. God, we give you praise right now. God, we say thank you for what you're doing. Oh, come on, somebody tell them thank you on this morning. Oh, come on, somebody begin to open up your mouth and give God praise on this morning. God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor. God, we exalt you. Father, we bless you. We realize that there's nobody greater than you. And so, Lord, we give you the praise that is due your name right now in the name of Jesus. We honor you, God, for bringing us through. We honor you, God, for taking us to another place. And it's in Jesus' name. We give you glory. It's in Jesus' name. We give you praise. We honor you now. In Jesus' name. Listen, as every head is bowed, every eye is closed, I just want you to repeat this prayer out. Go ahead and repeat this prayer. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, confess that I, am a sinner, I confess that I am a sinner. And I need you in my life. And I, need you in my life. And I believe you sent your son, and I believe you sent your son to die on Calvary for my sins. To die on Calvary for my sins. I, I believe he rose again after three days. I believe he rose again after three days. And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And I give you my life. And I give you my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Listen, listen, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, or maybe you're recommitting your life to the Lord, I want to encourage you. I want you to share that with us. I want you to just uh, inbox us, email us, let us know what's taking place. We want to walk alongside of you. We want to encourage you and allow you to understand um, what steps need to take place next. I want to encourage you to continue to hold on to God through this season and believe God for what he's going to do on the other side. How many believe God that God is up to something? I wonder if anybody believes that he's up to something in your life. Amen. 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 Even as we continue at this time, I'm going to turn this back over. Um, amen. Sister Raphael, she's going to lead, uh, take us through our announcements and our offering. And then at the end, we will have our baptism um, inside, amen, um, at the end of service. 